In this presentation, we're going to be looking at exploratory talk and specifically Neil Mercer's uh, formulation of exploratory talk. So here is a definition by Mercer from his 2000 book, Words and Minds. And you can read for yourselves, but it says exploratory talk is that which partners in, in which partners engage critically, but constructively. So crucially, it's about criticality and constructing ideas together. Relevant information is offered for joint consideration. Proposals may be challenged and counter challenged, but reasons are given. Alternatives are offered. And agreement is sought as a basis for joint progress. And the most important point here is that knowledge is made publicly accountable. In other words, we have to explain our ideas and reasoning is visible. So that's what Mercer is talking about when he discusses exploratory talk. That is what we are trying to enable children to do, to be critical and constructive, to be able to challenge each other's ideas and counter challenge, giving reasons and alternatives. And it's about making thinking about making reasoning visible through talk. The first thing to do is to establish the context within which we're we are discuss the context we are discussing. Now when we were doing dialogic teaching in your essay you've got to think about an asymmetrical context. So here is an asymmetrical context. The uh, people who are talking are sitting in a circle but the teacher is part of the group. And the teacher has power. The teacher has, the teacher has life experiences the children don't have. The teacher is always going to be leading that discussion based on their own life experiences, on their in learning intentions for the children, etc., etc. What Mercer is interested in is how children talk together. Now, that doesn't mean there aren't management issues. There are management issues. We need to think about how we set up that talk and enable that talk to happen. But it's a symmetrical context because the children have, the, they're the same age, they have the same sort of experiences, the same knowledge, the same sorts of knowledge and understanding and skills related to the curriculum uh, as, as each other. So it's a symmetrical context and that's what we're considering. By now you should be familiar with Mercer's three kinds of talk. We've been exploring it in our seminars and doing activities around it, around these types of talk. And you have here disputational talk, cumulative talk and exploratory talk. And it is exploratory talk that we are concerned with in your assignment. You want to be able to facilitate children using exploratory talk when they work together. And Mercer is clear that without your intervention, without setting it up, that children are more likely to engage in disputational or cumulative talk, which will not be characterized by that list under exploratory talk there, that everyone listens together, they ask questions, they share rele relevant information, they challenge ideas giving reasons, they build on what has gone before, they're encouraged to to contribute and respect each other in an atmosphere of trust. They have a shared purpose and where they need to make a joint decision, they seek agreement to give to have something that is a joint idea that they can then come back with after that discussion, after that exploratory talk, which contrasts with the disputational talk where you see disagreement, no attempts to pull resources, yes it is, no it isn't kind of uh, responses to each other, competitive rather than cooperative atmosphere, or cumulative where the participants simply agree with one another. And this is all about thinking together, about uh, interthinking as Mercer calls it. Thinking together for collective making sense of experience and solving problems. So that is what this is about. Exploratory talk is a way in which we can, in which children can think together, making sense collectively of experience and solving problems together. And we can link that back to Vygotsky and to social constructivism, the idea that we start on the intermental plane, that we explore ideas together, and then we internalize those on the intramental plane. 
And coming back to our three kinds of talk, if you look at the disputational talk, disagreement, few attempts to pull resources, yes it is, no it isn't, competition, you can see how little that would support the collective making sense of experience and solving problems. But let's go down to this one, cumulative talk, because quite often students will say that cumulative talk is a positive thing. Well, cumulative talk is certainly more positive than disputational. But in terms of making sense of experience and problem solving, it is limited because the ideas are being accepted without criticism. So there is no sense there that ideas be, are being challenged and reasoning going on. Why am I doing this? Why are you saying that? Explain this to me. I need to understand the connections that you're making. And when we have read assignments on Mercer, and believe me, we've read a lot, there are some common misconceptions that come up. And we have talked about these in, in one of the seminars, but I want to come back to it now. That first one of these is that Mercer sees that each of these three forms of talk are equally effective. Now, hopefully the previous few slides have popped that particular bubble. That actually, in terms of interthinking, collectively making sense of experience and solving problems, no, they are not. That they represent a talk sequence. You know, I'm going to plan for the children to use disputational, then cumulative, then exploratory talk. To which the question is, why? Why are you doing that? When we know that exploratory talk is going to be the most effective way of ch for children to um, explore ideas and to shape ideas effectively. And that teachers and children are exploratory when they talk together. Remember, an asymmetrical context is asymmetrical because the teacher brings life experience and knowledge of the world that the children don't have. It is possible sometimes if you have a new experience, if you are approaching something that is completely unfamiliar, that you may be able to have an exploratory conversation with children, but it is very unlikely and you would need to pick that apart. And I don't think that you have the words in your essay to do that. And the final one is one that is very common, which is that any talk activity would generate exploratory talk. I put the children into a group and they talked about, they discussed um, the opening of the wordless picture book, The Arrival. Why would that be exploratory? thinking about the qualities of exploratory talk, about reasoning, about exp uh, uh, justifying what you've done, about challenging ideas. It could just be cumulative, it could be disputational. It depends on the talk relationships the children have with each other, not just the content of the teaching and learning. Which is why people like Mercer and Barnes and Dawes talk about the importance of, of children learning how to use exploratory talk. This is something you have to be strategic about. And it may be that in your assignment you talk about that the children will have already have developed their own rules for talk. So here is um, a set of children uh, uh, rules for talk that children have come up with. They share their ideas, they talk with each other, they respect, we give reasons and we disagree, we ask why, and we try to agree in the end. So you can see that how that matches the, the conditions for exploratory talk. So these ground rules here helped to ensure that the exploratory talk actually happens. So when you are setting up an activity, you are setting it up in such a way, maybe with ground rules beforehand, but also in how you are explaining the activity to the children and how they should approach it, so that you know that they are going to engage, or the chances are at least they are going to engage the exploratory talk if they do as they've been asked. Here I've just isolated Mercer's conditions for exploratory talk, that everyone listens actively, etc., etc. Those are the foundations for this presentation, but now what we're going to do is we're going to think about this kind of talk, children talking together here, and link them to Robin Alexander's work. 
Now remember, Robin Alexander is the person who has come up with the idea of dialogic teaching and dialogue specifically within dialogic teaching. You are not writing about that because you are writing about Mercer's exploratory talk. However, Alexander not only has teaching repertoires, as in the talk of the teacher, remember he also has organisational repertoires and children's learning talk. So we're going to look at children's learning talk next in the context of exploratory talk. Here are Alexander's learning talk repertoires and children may engage with any or all of these as part of an exploratory talk activity. The question is what is the what do you want children to learn and what do you want them to engage with? So for instance if you are exploring um, why things have happened in a story up until this point children may be asked to narrate and explain why they think events have happened but as part of that they would build upon answers that other children had given they would discuss and argue and reason and justify together and explore and evaluate ideas if on the other hand you were doing a drama activity and children were engaged in uh, creating still images and that in the process of engage creating the still images they will engage in exploratory talk because of the way that you've set it up that there they may also involve in narration but actually they are problem solving because they are identifying key points in a, in a particular story or parts of a story that they need to represent they may explore as they are creating the still images but as they're doing it ask questions oh is that the right way if you stood there would that show that person's feeling better and they build upon the answers and here the answers may also be non-verbal i could stand like this but then we could discuss that and reason and justify better ways of doing it. All of this involves negotiation, of course, and explanation as to why I think this. And it may also involve instruction. If you stand there and I stand here and we do that, then I've instructed my peer on what to do. And we're speculating, imagining what the audience would see when we do these still images. So question, what do you want children to learn and what kinds of talk will enable them to do that? And how do you frame that talk for them? What resources do you give them? Do you give them prompts for talk? Do you give them prompts for the kind of activity you want them to do or the questions you want them to ask around the text? And again, do you go back to your ground rules? Are there ground rules specific for drama? talk as opposed to ground rules for general talk when we're sitting around a table. These are things that you need to think about when you're creating your activity. And of course a fundamental part of that creation of your activity is organising the groups or organising the children. We're talking about symmetrical talk, so we are not talking about teacher-led or whole class teaching or teacher and pupil. We're talking about either group work or one-to-one -one pupil pairs. And again, it depends on what the learning you want to happen is and how you organise that. So thinking about what kinds of talk will a group enable the children to engage with or what kind of talk will pair talk enable them to engage in that if you want to build ideas, then actually you need a group to be able to do that, probably. If you want a sharing of experience and you've got limited, you want a limited sharing experience, a, a one to one situation in which children can share experience and discuss the differences between their experiences and um, uh, uh, to argue about the meaning or well, argue, sorry, to discuss and to explore the ideas around that experience, then perhaps one-to-one -one is better. What about thinking about um, Mercer and thinking about Mercer and Barnes? Because Mercer and Barnes, people can get confused between the notions of exploratory talk. Now, Mercer's exploratory talk is concerned with how children talk together. So children talk to each other. And as they talk, 
they explore. And it's about the conversation that is happening between them in the middle here, that interthinking. Barnes's exploratory talk is about how the individual child talks. So they can be engaged in Mercer's exploratory talk, talking to each other, but it's what does this child say? And is it presentational or is it exploratory? What does this child say? What kind of talk they're using? Is it presentational, where they have an answer that they're going to give, or is it exploratory? But as they talk, they form their thinking. So this could happen in, an, in, a, in, a, in a symmetrical situation like this, or it could be within an asymmetrical context, because Barnes is concerned with how an individual child is talking. That can be conversation between the child and the teacher. It doesn't have to be between children. So a teacher may ask a child to give uh, a summary of a discussion that's been happening in talk partners, in which case that would be presentational talk, or to explore ideas as they're talking, which would be exploratory talk. Of course, you are not looking at an asymmetrical context, you are looking at a symmetrical context. The reason I've put this slide in is so that you don't make the mistake in your assignment of talking about Barnes being only relevant to symmetrical contexts. Barnes is relevant to any context where a child is using talk as part of learning. So finally, to make some points about exploratory talk. When we are talking about Mercer, we are talking about exploratory talk that is concerned with children in a symmetrical context without the teacher being part of the discussion that they are having. Mercer's exploratory talk describes the ways in which children talk with and listen to each other. It doesn't describe how they approach particular aspects of the curriculum. It is about the talking relationships they have with each other. So when you're planning for exploratory talk, the children need to know how to understand in those particular, how to, sorry, need to understand how to engage in those particular learning behaviors, those talk behaviors of listening to each other, of building on each other's ideas, of questioning each other and asking for clarification. But when we are planning for exploratory talk, we need to consider what we want children to talk about. We can't just say discuss it. And part of that may be asking what talk from Alexander's learning repertoire, uh, learning repertoire they may need to use. I say maybe. It may be that perhaps you don't want to go down that route. But it's one thing you could consider if you wanted to bring Alexander's learning repertoires into your discussion of exploratory talk. But remember, you are focusing on exploratory talk if you're doing that part of the essay, that, that version of the essay. To summarise, then, you are going to be discussing expl Mercer's exploratory talk and how you can facilitate that through an activity that is related to a children's text. You can bring in Barnes' exploratory talk, remembering that Barnes is talking about the, the language of an individual child and how that helps them frame their thinking or represents their thinking if they are engaging in presentational talk. And you differentiate between that and Mercer's exploratory talk, which is the language between the children. It is the quality of the discussion between the children. Of course, that needs to be organised. In theory, you could have a pupil-to-pupil -pupil group conversation with a whole class of children. The question is how you would manage that to ensure, how they would manage it, sorry, to ensure that it was exploratory and how you would set that up to ensure that it was exploratory rather than cumulative. Remembering there needs to be space for children to challenge each other, to question and all those kind of things. It may be you think that a group of six children would be better, or it may be that you do uh, child to child peer talking but this needs to fit the learning outcome what are you trying to achieve and what language do you want the children to be using so you can have Barnes exploratory and uh, uh, presentational talk but also you've got Alexander's learning repertoires so if you want as part of the exploration for children to narrate well when little red riding hood goes through the forest the first thing that happens is she meets the the wolf that's narration 
but children may want to discuss that and analyze it and 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 then, and then use that as a basis for exploration but if you want them to be able to use recalling parts of the story, how are you going to ensure they do that? Is that going to be on a prompt sheet between them? Is it going to be as part of the instructions beforehand? You need to think about all of those things in planning the activity. And finally, the teacher's talk. If, the ch if you are giving the children instructions on how you want them to do an activity, then inevitably that is going to involve the teacher. Mercer does talk about teachers talk and you can certainly use that if you wanted you could even use Alexander's uh, teaching repertoire where he talks about instruction and explaining. However your main point is around the children talking together in exploratory talk in a symmetrical context so don't get too carried away with the teacher talk that may just provide the prompt for the children to talk um, because you have such a small word count on this assignment. Finally, some reading for you. The first one by Barnes was the re one of the readings for the lead lecture. So hopefully you've already read it, but it's worth going back to because this is a really clear explanation of the nature of exploratory talk for learning. The second one is unpicking child to child talk within a mixed attainment context where actually you could question whether a group of children is symmetrical if one of the children is the more knowledgeable other what happens and how learning works in that context you may feel you don't want to confuse yourself with that if you feel you're secure with exploratory talk and you want to push it further, you want to take that a little bit and, and, and challenge your own ideas and challenge your own thinking, then have a look at Fernandez because it's a really interesting article and makes us question the assumptions we make around children's talk and who is the knowledgeable person when we are sharing talk together. I hope this presentation has been helpful to you. If you have any questions, please do email me or speak to your English tutor if I'm not your English tutor.